Hi guys, I'm Lauren and I'm going to teach you today how to make the easiest ferment that I know how and that's a beet kvass. Uh, so all I have here is I just bought a bunch of beets. So this is three. They're on sale because it's fall and it's root vegetable season. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to, I gave them a quick rinse and I'm going to just cut off either end and I'm going to put them aside. So I brought out two jars here and I'm going to have two jars worth out of these three beets. I'm going to start by taking some whey. So how I made this whey, that's this stuff right here, is I just strained Greek yogurt overnight. I just put some cheesecloth over a strainer, set it out for a little bit. The curds separate from the whey. This is the whey. Uh, so I'm going to take two tablespoons of this and I'm going to put it in each jar. So this right here is the culture. So when you're fermenting things, you're just preserving it by adding in culture. This is the culture that you're adding in. So again, two tablespoons in each jar. We also need some salt. And I'm gonna put one teaspoon in each jar. Doesn't need to be exact. And I know a lot of people are concerned about salt, but the salt is more so for preserving it. And that's not a whole lot in a big jug like this. And usually with beet kvass, you're not drinking a whole bunch at one go. Like usually it's I'll have an ounce or two. So I'm gonna fill this up with some filtered water, distilled water, um, reverse osmosis water. Um, I think there's something in the chlorine in tap water affects it a little bit, so if you can have some type of filtration, that would be a little bit better. So I'm going to just shake this a little bit just to mix it, I guess. Dissolve the salt, get it all stirred up. I'm going to take my beets and I'm going to cut them into chunks. Wouldn't worry too much about the size of the chunks or the uniformity of the chunks. And I'm going to put them into the jars. So I'm going to, I want to take this opportunity now that I'm actually cutting to do a nice shout out for Naturally Amped. So Adrian is the owner of Naturally Amped. They're based out of Saskatoon. She was the one who originally taught me how to make ferments. Um, and really got me down the path of fermenting my own foods. Um, ferments are great for gut bacteria. It's, it had helped her with, she had a lot of systemic inflammation. For me, it's helpful for my own mental and, mental and physical health. A lot of your serotonin is made in your gut. There's a lot of other neurotransmitters that are made in your gut. So making sure you have a nice, healthy gut biome is very beneficial to having a nice, healthy, happy life. Um, I've gotten to the point now where I have had ferments in my diet for about a year now, and it's made a huge difference in reduction of brain fog, in reduction of inflammation. I feel like I can do things a lot more easily, a lot more functionally, and it's definitely one of those I notice now when they're when I don't have ferments in my diet, I had a student who I also set up with Adrian, and she has, the only difference she's made in the last little bit was adding in ferments, and she lost, I think, 30 pounds over the course of a couple weeks. Like, it's, it does make a difference having fermented foods in your system. So now I'm going to just top up the water here until there's about an inch off of the top. You can see it's already a nice, beautiful red color. I'm gonna take my lids and screw them on nice and tight. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave these. I'm gonna put a towel over top of them. I'm gonna put them on my counter. Just keep them out of direct sunlight for four to seven days, just burping them. So what it does is as it actually ferments, you should be able to, you know, you can usually pop the lid. If the lid is full of air, just open it just a little bit like this, let the air out. You can give it a taste. When it tastes like you want it to taste, put it in your fridge. It'll last for about six months. Thanks. Bye.